once we get seated, we will get the program going. Thank you so much. Greetings to the CTS family gathered both on campus and online. If a professor were to give one brilliant lecture in one class session or teach one outstanding course in one academic term or inspire one student during one academic year, we might consider that one occurrence as just that 
a one-off, an accident, a fluke, or at best, a one-hit wonder. <laughs> On the contrary, if a professor were to give brilliant lectures, teach outstanding courses, and inspire countless students year after year after year, we would have to consider these multiple occurrences as categorically different phenomena. In a word, I think we would call those occurrences and that professor excellent. Since the ancient teachers rightly indicated that excellence is not an act, it is a habit. How blessed we are at CTS to have an embarrassment of riches when it comes to professorial excellence. So much so that today we gather to honor not one, not two, not three, but instead four excellent educators, beloved colleagues, and sacred siblings. Dr. Joanne Terrell, Dr. Ken Stone, Dr. Bo Myung So, and Dr. Scott Haldeman, who collectively have provided CTS more than 100 years of teaching excellence. In the earliest days of my CTS presidency, I was fortunate to converse with these four colleagues and glean from their considerable wisdom. A friend of mine says, quote, when in the presence of greatness, take notes, end quote. When I talked with, or more importantly, listened to, these wise teachers. I took notes, literally on my pad, and I figuratively inscribed those notes on the tablet in my heart because I was, and we are, in the presence of greatness. Therefore, I affectionately refer to these four colleagues as the sages of CTS. With joy, we celebrate the sages and their beautiful praiseworthy, unrelenting commitment to professorial excellence. I'm giving the, <clears throat> excuse me, the land acknowledgement. 
we honor and embrace the stories, histories, and cultures of the native and indigenous people who were unjustly removed from their ancestral homelands. Our seminary building sits on traditional territories of the Peoria and Kickapoo nations, as well as the unceded homelands of the Council of the Three Fires, the Ojibwe, Ottawa, and Potawatomi. We acknowledge the very real horrors of colonizer behavior, including land dispossession, cultural oppression, and religious persecution, child removal, boarding schools, and slavery. We recognize that verbally acknowledging the stories and histories of indigenous peoples is only a first step. On our learning journey of justice, we seek ways to move forward from this place to cultivate a more inclusive, diverse, and equitable society. Hello, everyone. My name is Mark Winters. I am uh, a board member of CTS. I'm an ordained United Church of Christ pastor, and I am a very proud student of each of the four faculty we are honoring today. I am humbled to uh, speak at this moment of this occasion uh, and want to express my incredible gratitude to Drs. Haldeman, So, Stone, and Terrell whose lessons, whose stories are with me daily in ministry still, even 15 years after graduation. Uh, I wrote a poem in their honor because part of my tradition is Christianity in the United Church of Christ, and then the part of it is uh, literature and poetry and a little fun. So this is Legacy with immense gratitude to Drs. Haldeman, So, Stone, and Terrell. 100 years of teaching at Chicago Theological Seminary, a century advising, guiding, or occasionally confessionary. How much preparation, how many student crises, how much bad nutrition sitting up late at nightsies. How much time spent in silence posing questions to a room of uncertain master's students in person or on Zoom. With mounting hours of meetings and monetary panic at moments may have muttered, do we teach on the Titanic? They've made professors and ministers into womanists and liberators. They've queered and decolonized as they've incubated innovators. Haldeman sculpted us into celebrants as he painted prayers with words. Everything matters, he taught us, and pulled prowess from our hurts. Ken Stone seemed so quiet during the orientation retreating, but just minutes into people and faith, boundless brilliance we were meeting. Dr. So's calm and quiet cadence called us to consider more closely capitalism, Christianity, Cornell West, Zizek, Said, and Chomsky. Dr. Terrell disassembled my certainty and nurtured in me a new faith from Augustine and James H. Cohn and the $5 words she saith. Their questions in our conversations linger, lo linger longer than they may know, hovering in our hearts and minds with us wherever we go. Can liturgy be an implement that heals, makes less selfish? What do we do with judges, sacred scriptures, which are hellish? What actually is real? after post-colonial analysis? Can white supremacy and privilege be left in the tomb of Lazarus? Time spent with teachers like these can be a spiritual rebirth. Their imprint in our lives and work far more than a century's worth. Thank you.
We're going to hear from each of our four sages in just a moment, but uh, we're going to start with introductions um, from uh, current faculty members. So um, uh, Dr. Camilo Hal Sharp will introduce Professor Terrell, and then we'll give Professor Terrell a few moments to speak as well. Good afternoon. I have the honor and the privilege to introduce the only woman in this group of great theological educators, a phenomenal woman she is. I have admired her from a distance for a long time, and it's a wondrous experience to be able to now work alongside her. It was her curation of the artwork in the halls that led me to CTS and know that this was a place I was not only welcome, but that I could actually thrive. A trailblazer womanist, oh, in the, the, theologian and in womanist thought. Her book, Power in the Blood, The Cross and the African American Experience, challenged those in the classroom, the pulpit, and the pews. And it continues to challenge us today, a challenge we greatly need. Her interreligious explorations take us on journeys and stops that many of us never ex even considered. But the spiritually eclectic theologian, as she calls herself, has a presence that is both pastoral and prophetic. There is care and compassion in her words and her actions. What I have come to understand is that when the guru shows up, the people will be challenged, they will learn, and they will grow. And for the last 29 years, the guru has shown up at CTS, making us all better. But beyond being an amazing scholar and educator, in true womanist form, her gifts and talents are many. And her creativity is a beautiful thing. Her beautiful voice brings a beautiful spirit in any place where she lifts it. When I first got here and they told me that she sings, I said, she sings? And they said, do she sing? I clearly, <laughs> I clearly was offending the room. But when I heard her voice, I understood their righteous indignation. But there's so much beauty, intelligence, and creativity in her, and there's so much to love. But she loves so much. She loves her daughter. She loves her family. She loves her students. And she loves the people. And that love shows and has shown each time for 29 years here at CTS. And for her, we are tremendously grateful. It is my pleasure to introduce none other than the Reverend Dr. Joe Ann Marie Terrell. Thirty spokes will converge upon the hub of a wheel, but the use of the cart depends on the part of the hub that is empty. With a wall all around, a clay bowl is molded, but the use of the bowl depends on the part of the bowl that is empty. Cut out windows and doors in your house as you build, but the use of the house will depend on the space in the walls that is empty. So advantage is had by whatever is there, but usefulness arises from whatever is not. The words from the Tao Te Ching. President Braxton, Chairwoman McLean, Dean Vogt, faculty and staff colleagues, beloved students, alumni, and all friends of Chicago Theological Seminary. I always dreamt of my late mentor, Dr. James Cone, before he proposed I do some big thing. That spring day in 1995, I had dreamt of him only the night before he asked me if he could submit my name to the search committee at Chicago Theological Seminary. I was certain that this appointment would be a temporary one. I was supposed to be a, a replacement for a faculty member on sabbatical. Honestly, I did not want to leave my beloved New York, 
but I decided to make myself useful for the short term. 29 years, one cat, one daughter, one dog, and maybe 40 hairdos later, <laughs> I'm still here. My students will tell you that I teach them to acknowledge the transrational comprised of premonitions, dreams, visions, ecstatic utterances, even serendipity as a valid source of doing theology because sometimes these phenomena move us to do what we otherwise might not do. They have demonstrably proven to redirect history, contribute to the advancement of human knowledge, if only incrementally, and test our physical, spiritual, and emotional mettle, collectively and individually, whether or not we resist the transcendent messages that come to us always unbidden and often unwelcome. I have discovered in nearly 30 years of teaching, feels like a hundred, that as my usefulness increases, so my big P purpose continuously reveals itself as the lifelong work of learning how to do the things that I must do and of being myself while continuously becoming what I will become. As an academic, I must produce syllabi, write and lecture profoundly and prodigiously, attend in-house and outside meetings, grade papers, my all-time favorite thing to do. And let's see, did I mention meetings? I confess I have to be convinced at times to be more attentive to what I am supposed to do. Yet despite being busy doing life, big P purpose compels me to see and love myself as I am, in the words of Suge Avery, to relax, go with everything that's going and praise God by liking what I like. Yet the highly conditioned nature of human existence makes being harder than doing and makes harder still the work of becoming, the work of discerning who I want to be. Doing what one is called to do, discipline, is clarifying what one likes and remembering what one wants. To my faculty colleagues, I especially wish to say some things you probably already know. Although advantages had by the trappings of education, training, devotion, and stature accorded to us, and though overweening intellectual pride is a hazard of academia, you consistently choose to be useful in the reshaping of ideas or gnosis, knowledge that literally saves people. You have been and will always be my teachers, my friends, and my family of choice. I am deeply honored to confront and care for the world with you as prophets who strike wounds that heal, as priests who bind them up, as preachers who savor and promulgate good news. It makes me more open, more daring, and more joyful about what I do, who I am, and who I am becoming. I want it to be, and I still am, becoming an insightful scholar, an apt teacher, a compassionate minister, a doting mother, a person for others, willing to do what gets revealed as my next big thing. I want it to be, I am, and I am still becoming a person of consequence, conveying to my students that they too are consequential. And with my whole heart, I honor the ways in which my mentor who led me to this community, various administrations, board members, staff, and faculty colleagues, those present and those of sacred memory, have been standard bearers for the presumptive consequentialness of all humans doing, being, and becoming. 
And I thank you, thank you, that I have never, ever had to sacrifice my personal dignity, my dreams, or anything at all to get the affirmation. Amen, amin, ashe. Thank you so much, Professor Terrell. Uh, we're now gonna hear from Professor Rachel Mikva, who will introduce Dr. Ken Stone. Thank you, Dean Vert. I am so odd to be in the virtual midst of such wisdom and experience. Um, and I'm deeply honored to introduce Dr. Stone. You all know his credentials. You know he's a phenomenal teacher who supports and challenges students from diverse backgrounds in figuring out how do you think about and study and interpret Hebrew Bible. For some, it's their first encounter with critical studies and it can be very eye-opening. And for others, it's a heart-opening experience showing students how a text they didn't think had much to teach them can really speak anew in our context, our time, our place. And you also already know that Dr. Stone is an incredibly respected scholar whose interests always seem to be on the leading edge of a new subfield, whether it be queer studies or animals and ecology and biblical interpretation. If Dr. Stone's doing it, then we all want to do it. He's a Lambda Literary Award winner and his publications have attracted national and international attention. His insights and, and, and interdisciplinary rigor really make for must read material. Um, when, when, as Dr. So noted, when Ken was appointed to the um, endowed distinguished service professor chair not so long ago, it's really hard to imagine any scholar doing serious work in queer theory or animal studies and the Hebrew Bible without engaging Dr. Stone's work. And that's an incredible testament to the value of one's scholarship. You also already know that Dr. Stone is profoundly committed to CTS, that he embodies its highest values in his work, in his manner, in his spirit, because you've seen it every day for decades. So let's talk about what really matters. Ken Stone was and always will be my dean. He was dean when I arrived. So apologies to Dean Vogt and Dr. Crowder, who have also performed valuable service in this important role. And apologies to Ken, who served as dean for over 10 years, which is more than enough for any sane person. <clears throat> and who surely had enough when he stepped down and probably didn't need me or want me still reaching out to him in deany ways, which I did. Leading a faculty can be like herding cats, especially if you want to change anything. But Ken guided us through a move from the old building to the new one, persuaded us to learn how to teach online, got us through reaccreditation and so much more herded all the cats. And all along the way, he helped to preserve the communal decision-making customs and collegial culture that makes CTS such a special place to teach. He modeled how to navigate the changing and often challenging times together as a faculty. So I wanna close my introduction with my favorite Ken Stone framing phrases which like your favorite teachers, you always hear in your head in, when they're nowhere nearby, you just, it, their words still echo in your ears. So I hear these phrases every now and then when Dr. Stone is nowhere around. When he's about to say something he thinks is really, really hard to hear, to be perfectly honest is the way he'll introduce it. And when he's about to address something that made him really, really mad, He'll say, I'm completely flummoxed by, 
And then when he sets forth his opinion, but doesn't want to overdetermine the result, he'll say his piece and then he'll say, but I'm glad to discuss it further, which more than once preserved faculty solidarity and more than once made decisions take forever. <laughs> so for your many gifts, Dr. Stone, we are deeply grateful. You bring blessing to this place and to all those whose lives you touch. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mikva, for those kind words. And I'm really honored to be up here with my colleagues and friends. Uh, not only does Dr. Terrell sing, I asked her to sing at my wedding. My spouse, Adolfo, is here uh, today. And my dear friend, Scott, reminded me with only weeks to go before that wedding that I needed to write vows and wondered if uh, we would like some help, which we did. Uh, and uh, of course, my friend, Dr. So, uh, who has walked many times uh, back to the faculty six flat with our departed friend, Ted Jennings, uh, after a lively conversation uh, at Jimmy's or the University of Chicago uh, pub. Um, but, and, and I feel uh, equally close to most of my colleagues and uh, very proud to be a part of this faculty. Um, however, one of our headers for today is, uh, is teaching, and so my mind naturally runs to students when, uh, when I think about teaching, and I have to say that ever since I first visited CTS in the 1990s, I was really quite struck by the unique mix of students at CTS. Uh, I don't want to romanticize it. Um, it's not always a peaceful, harmonious mix. Uh, and the mix changes over time. We don't have exactly the same types of students now that we had when I came to CTS. Uh, CTS. But there's a recognizable ecology in, uh, in the student body at CTS. It's always held together for the students and the faculty. It's always held together by a shared collective commitment uh, on the part of all of us um, to doing justice and loving mercy as the prophet Micah puts it. And uh, especially this time of year uh, in the period from the oral exams for our graduating students and commencement at the end of this week, um, I'm especially conscious of the fact that our students go on to do great things, a wide variety of different types of great things, but they go on to do great things and they continue to teach us uh, as uh, alums like Mark Winters uh, and many of you sitting here uh, continue to teach us and make us better teachers and, and students. Um, and that's the last thing I say, uh, I want to say, I appreciate gratitude for my teaching, but I'm also conscious of the fact that being in the classroom and especially at a place like CTS uh, and especially working with wonderful colleagues like these, one is never just a teacher, one is always a student. And uh, that's one thing that I will always be grateful uh, to CTS for giving me um, is an opportunity to continue learning across the course of my career. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, up next, um, Professor Jose Morales will introduce Professor Bomyang So, and then Bomyang will give a response. Thank you. Thank you, Dean. Uh, Dr. Uh, Bomyang So is a unique theologian and philosopher. On the one hand, he thinks and theologizes in the realm of aesthetics and poetics. We see this expressed in three of his exemplary uh, courses, theology and photography, theology of art, and existentialism, theology, literature, and cinema. Yet on the other hand, his scholarly exploits into theological aesthetics are never divorced from the exigencies of life, never detached from, to quote Marx, if I may do so, 
the sigh of the oppressed creation. Aesthetics does not mean fleeting escapism for Dr. Su. Conversely, at the center of his theological aesthetic concern are the suffering peoples of the world. At the center are the communities, to allude to Marx again, the communities haunted by the soulless conditions of colonialism, those enfleshed peoples whom the public thinker and rage against the machine frontman, Zach de la Rocha dubbed the people of the sun. This prophetic commitment manifests itself in his research and lectures on liberationist and post-colonial thought and in his courses like Global Sensitivity and Ministry and Christianity and Colonialism. Poetics and protest dance together in Dr. Su's theologizing. I'll say that again for the party people up top. Poetics and protest dance together in Dr. Su's theologizing. Aesthetics and advocacy mutually constitute and edify each other. Dr. So is truly unique, unique indeed. He has degrees from Drew University and uh, University of Chicago, and, but he's got his MDiv and his PhD from this very institution, the finest in the world, if I may be so bold to clear that, Chicago Theological Seminary. Like me, he theologizes and publishes in two languages, maybe more, but I've seen two. And language dictates, shapes, informs the very questions you ask. And those questions are deepened even more when one thinks and writes between two languages. His research and lectureship covers a broad yet thoroughly interconnected range of themes and loci theological anthropology, higher education, theology of culture, post-colonialism, existentialism, and even theological bibliograph uh, biographical treatments of seminal figures on both sides of the pond, the other pond, the Atlantic pond. Figures like Han Son Hoon, the so-called Gandhi of Korea, and Ralph Waldo Emerson, one of the founders of the Americanist philosophical tradition. Professor Su began his revolutionary pedagogy at CTS in 1998 as a lecturer and in, as assistant professor two years later. His 24 years here, 26 counting his lectureship, have been a quarter century of transforming presence and witness, not just for students, but for those of us here who are blessed to consider him a colleague in our midst. I'm ever grateful for Dr. So. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Morales, for those kind words. And I like to have the text. Please send it to me you know, so that I can be reminded of what I am good at. Thank you. I am uh, deeply appreciative of this honor that is being bestowed upon me and uh, to my you know, wonderful uh, colleagues uh, here. Ever since this event was announced uh, a few months ago, I've been thinking about how to use my three minutes uh, on this podium. Uh, there was a lot to think about. And I'm quickly going to share just a couple of things that came to me to think about. I thought about my association with CTS, which began in 1987 as a renter in CTS's dormitory housing, followed by my student years at CTS with two degrees, followed by my 26 years of full-time teaching. I am grateful for my being part of this community for all those years. Two things stand out in my memory of all those years. Uh, it is the community 
that is CTS, and it's the commitments that CTS has espoused. Through all these years, CTS has been steadfast living out its stated commitments and in being a welcoming community for all. And I have always been proud of this aspect of CTS. Beyond my history with CTS, I thought about the history of CTS and the moments, moments of its, moments of history, which I am particularly proud of. Of the first three professors ever hired by CTS, two of them were at one time or another were accused of holding unorthodox doctrinal views. Not being tied down by the need to be orthodox in a way defines the history of this very institution. From the very beginning, CTS wanted to be, quote, different from any other, unquote, schools. And in my estimation, we have lived up to that self-pronouncement made in, 19, in 1850s. CTS, for example, was the first theological school to adopt sociology as an area of theological studies. Through this adoption, we pioneered theological field education that happened in the 19th century. We were, we were the leaders in adopting psychological disciplines into theology and led the movement for clinical pastoral education in earlier part of the 20th century. In the last decade, decade of the 20th century, we were a leading institution in pioneering queer theology. And we are currently a, a leading seminary through our interreligious initiatives. I thought about the people with whom I serve this seminary, but who are no longer with us. There are many, and all of their names came to me. In this challenging, challenging time for theological education, I think we will continue to be guided by the two things that I mentioned that, de that define the history of CTS. It's our sense of being in a community together and our sense of commitment to the causes of God's mercy and justice. And it is, uh, you know, with a tremendous feeling, a uh, tremendous feeling of gratitude uh, and, uh, you know, grateful, you know, seeing so many uh, students and uh, old friends uh, here for the first time in, in, in many years. Uh, uh, you know, I just want to, Say say thank you uh, for uh, for being in a community together with me, and I am you know grateful for uh, you know having been you know part of this you know part of our school's history uh, for the last uh, thirty some years, and it's been a it's been a privilege uh, that I don't take lightly, uh, and uh, thank you all. Okay. Thank you. Um, and finally, we have uh, Dr. Uh, Christoph Ringer will be introducing Professor Scott Haldeman. It's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Scott Haldeman. When I first began at CTS, I remember having a conversation with Scott. We were talking about one of his classes, and he described on the very first day of class, he would look out at the students, look across the room, and then ask them, what is worship? 
And then the students began to squirm and began to fumble over their words, over this thing that we're kind of supposed to know about. And I remember thinking, I love that. But Scott talks about this is a kind of question that represents the CTS way. And the CTS way is a way of teaching and thinking that eventually touches our own experience. Scott recalls a time when he was in an exam with a student. And Andre Lecoq looked at the student and said, this sounds like a fine systematic theology. However, it doesn't sound like you've undergone what you say you believe. Over the past 20 years, Scott has cherished chapel as a place where truth is expressed and we name injustices. But it's also a place where we've been fortunate to hear Scott name his own truth. He's offered us poignant reflections on the relationship of faith and failure. He offered us wisdom on navigating the pandemic from his own experience as a gay man living through the early days of the HIV AIDS crisis, connecting the experience of quarantine with the epistemology of the closet, which can be both coffin and sanctuary, a time where gay men were seen not just as carrying a virus, but seen as a virus. Scott Haldeman has undergone what he believes. Scott remembers that Dal Edgerton used to have a disco ball that sat on his desk in the dean's office. There it became a symbol of how things look from different perspectives. And Scott connects this disco ball to our current president, Brad Braxton's turning of the diamond. Both of those images represent Scott's dedication to exploration, curiosity, and imagination and the moments when students' eyes light up when they grasp a new idea or concept. Scott also shared with me the secrets of doing good theology. It's the pub. He affectionately recalls the faculty going to the pub to have beers, and there they would solve all the problems of the world and not remember what they saw the next day. No method is perfect. When Scott first arrived at CTS, he recalls Ken Stone picking him up from the airport and that Ken actually had a hole in the floor of his car. And then Lee Butler took him back to the airport once the interview was over and Lee looked at him and said, do you really want to come to this place? In between these bookends, there was a moment in which a student asked, how will you be the new Bill Myers who went on to work for ATS? And Scott said that he couldn't and that they should hire him only if they want him. I'll leave you with this image. Scott, led a, Scott Haldeman led a consecration service for students at Graham Taylor Hall in the old CTS building. There he took a bowl of water and students placed their hands in the bowl. And once they placed their hands in the bowl of water, they would place them on the concrete wall and they would pull their hands away and the image would be there and slowly the image of their hands would seep into the concrete. I'm glad that on today, now we're not letting you fade anywhere, just, so, just, for, just for the record. However, today we get to honor the ways in which Scott's legacy and his teaching have seeped into our hearts and into the institution of CTS. Thank you, Scott, for modeling in our midst the CTS way. It's all been said, but I'll stick to my text. I've been sort of dreading all this. <clears throat> I like to be behind the scenes. My mother was so excited, she signed on yesterday. How does one use well four minutes to talk about 24 years of teaching, learning, writing, writer's block, budget cuts, and countless meetings, meetings. 
meetings. I need to begin with my own version of dark humor as the party celebrating my parents' 50th wedding anniversary was going along and my, and my mom's younger sisters fought over whose gift was more appropriate. I clinked my glass to quiet the room and offered the, an irreverent toast. We all know what we really celebrate at a 50th anniversary, right? We celebrate that nobody's dead. Cheers to Gail and Bob. This afternoon, we really celebrate the simple fact that we four old ones have neither left nor died. Cheers all around. At the same time, and with all sincerity, thank you so much for this event, for the gratitude, for the memories, for the hope that we four and all of CTS will continue to thrive. That our little light amidst nearly overwhelming darkness will keep on shining, a candle in the wind. As I struggled to pull together this short speech, my best reflections were on the faces, the wisdom, the creativity, the passion for justice of those with whom I've been honored to serve on the faculty of CTS. The list is long, smart, passionate, creative, justice-loving people, all of them. Even when we disagreed on things, whether substantive or petty, gifted, committed, hardworking, hard playing, hilarious, deadly serious. Some have indeed died. Ted, Andre, Robert, Herman. Some have left for other fields in which to toil. Tim, Laurel, Janet. Some are honorably retired. Two are here today, Dow and Julia. Singe, Alice, Stephen, Bill, Susan. Some we have just welcomed, Jose, Camila with an I and Camilla with two E's. I want to name everyone, but there is not time. And I, of course, could and should repeat this with names of past and present staff, students, board members, friends, supporters, smart, passionate, creative, justice loving, gifted, committee, committed, it is the people, of course. Smart, passionate, creative, justice-loving, gifted, committed. Committed, gifted, justice-seeking, creative, passionate, smart. Committed, gifted, justice-seeking, creative, passionate, smart. Thank you. Ken, Bom Young, Scott, Joanne. I've been asked to make a video that is humorous uh, of memories of all of you on the occasion of a hundred years of teaching. I can think of many humorous moments. Unfortunately, they are not repeatable in a video that will be widely shared, but I can think of amazement that I can share that you all have helped CTS make it this far. And you know the sacrifices you've made. You know the struggles. You know sitting around across from each other and from me and saying, how are we gonna do this? And that is an occasion for joy, because a hundred years, a hundred years, a hundred years, that's a lot, it's a lot. 
And it makes me very proud to congratulate you on this magnificent achievement. And please be assured that I will never share those humorous stories. <laughs> Bye. Hi everyone, now we'll do a open mic, a gentle roast, and memories time, we'll have 10 minutes. So for those of you on Zoom, please uh, submit your stories in the chat. We can uh, download that transcript and share the stories with everyone, what, uh, what you have to say about our four honored professors here today. But for those in the room, if you have any gentle roasts or memories or stories about any of our professors, please make a line up behind me and I'll let you speak for a minute and then I'll cut you off and we'll go on to the next person. Hi, I'm Kelly Harrison. I graduated in 2020 online. Uh, I spent about 13 years at this seminary to graduate online. Um, and I'm going to go first because I like to talk. Um, this group of people, I, they've, you know, made me both the person and the pastor that I am in so many different ways. I have such tremendous respect and love uh, for all four of them. And they've each taught me something different. Um, I, I kind of want to highlight that, Ken, you don't know this, but you inspired me that if I ever started a band, I have no musical talent, but if I ever started a band, it would be called Hashem and the Tetragrammatons. I, I planned this in your class and wrote it down. Um, but again, no musical talent. Um, you know, Scott, you, you taught me against my will that I could create ceremony. Um, and uh, I recently have created uh, what I call children's church uh, for my Sunday school room. And we always end in song because the kids love this one song. And so we always sing it and they dance like insane. Um, but it's a lot of fun. Um, you taught me that Christianity should be questioning capitalism, not accepting it. Not just that we could question it, uh, but that we should question it. Uh, and Dr. Terrell, you know, you are, I will always think of you as my mentor for the rest of my life. Um, I do hear your words in my head often, um, and you've never apologized for that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and you know you are incredible. Okay, uh, you're incredibly intuitive and loving as a teacher, uh, and I really appreciated that. The last thing I want to say is um, when I heard mention of uh, professorial excellence from this group, I thought, yes, and prophetic excellence. Uh, that's the word that popped into my head, and uh, I just I'm really grateful to all of you. So. Thank you. Anyone else, please come up. Lori Baldwin, 2018, uh, D-Men. And I have an interesting story. Um, I've been called to ministry all my life, but I, loved my day job. And so I struggled for many years to answer the call. And so after 30 something years as a city planner, I planned to come back to school after doing a missionary junk, which didn't work out. And so I went through many changes and many challenges and found out now's time. And I had met Dr. Joanne Terrell many, many years before, and I know she expected me to do a PhD, but at the time that I came back, there wasn't time to do a PhD. Um, I had to hit it and quit it, and I knew I had to stay focused. So unfortunately, I never had classes 
with too many people, but those who were in my sphere. Uh, as a woman's theologian, I was very focused. But I have to say that Dr. Joanne gave me life and renewed my faith in the church because I struggled. <laughs> I'm a very creative person, and I was a city planner, and I remember Dr. Braxton, you and, Max, and Martha Simmons said, pastors need your skills. But in the real world, they didn't know what to do with me. So I said, OK, should I go back to my old job, or what should I do? And so it helped me to have another collectic, another, uh, uh, what could I should call it, creative person to help me to drive to be who I am and still do ministry and to define it for myself. And so that's why I say she gave me life. And CTS for me, it was a very different experience. So I thank God that I listened and was directed here. We have time for uh, two more stories. I can uh, read some of those stories uh, in the chat. Um, Michael Williams says, celebration, a stop to remember the journey to elderhood of learning, wisdom walking the halls of CTS. I salute you all. Mina Yi, she says, hello, I started my doctoral program with these professors' recommendation, Dr. So, Dr. Holdeman, and Dr. Stone. It means a lot to me. And this morning, I'm thinking about, um, I'm thinking how much uh, deeply, how deeply these four professors, the, theologies, teachings, and kindness shaped me. Thank you so much. I miss you all. Um, iPhone, it says, uh, I thank you for your devotion to the truth. Uh, J.L. Rose Simpson says, to our honorees, I carry each of you in my, not only in my daily walk as a teacher, preacher, and activist, but in my heart. So that is so filled with gratitude to have been part of your instruction. Blessed I am to have met, met, met each of you, congrats. Um, Arlisha Corley, she says, congratulations to all my professors. Uh, Dr. Terrell, I love you. Uh, your spirit awakens me to become the evolving womanist I am. Dr. So guided me as a spiritual advisor. Oh, let me let me bring the mic to you. No one can hear you. <laughs> I'm Michael Montgomery, class of '83 and 2003, um, and uh, we've celebrated what you've done in the past 25 years. I also want to celebrate what you're going to be doing next with us, and we look forward to being a part of that. <laughs> Don't be afraid. Uh, the, um, I'm Rick Peterson. I've known each of you since you were hired. You are still the youngins to me, and I appreciate so much all that you have done for CTS and for the world, uh, honestly, since, since I've known you. Um, particular memories are certain castinated dinners where I learned a lot, and that's about all I want to say more. Uh, but but you can talk to Scott later. <laughs> so thank you. And thank you all so much. That is our open mic. Uh, next, I bring up Dr. Vo. Uh, we're at the end of the program for the for the day here, uh, but I just want to thank you all for coming. Um, there's really not too much more we can say, but just thank you for your years of service and for making CTS and all of us who we are today. Uh, there's a little. Thank <laughs> you.
<laughs> no. Um, uh, are there any quick community announcements? Spring Fest is tomorrow evening here from four to seven. Open house tomorrow from four to seven, everyone welcome. I know we have a date now for the Castaneda lecture, June 4th. Any other announcements? Okay. Commencement is Friday at Trinity United Church of Christ starting at 10 a.m. Thank you all, there's lunch next door and let's give one more warm round of applause. Thank you. 